Ryuichi and Kotaru are two inseparable brothers who lost their parents in a plane crash, so the chairwoman of a high school, who had also lost her family in the same accident, takes them in. However, she doesn't want them so that they could be her new family, but instead to have Ryuichi be the school's babysitter since he had experience looking after his brother since infancy. Upon meeting, she reminds Ryuichi that they weren't called to be her new sons and gives him a brief interview on his caretaking abilities. Once she is satisfied, she orders her secretary, called Saikawa, to lead the brothers to the school's they care room. Saikawa informs Ryuichi that he's been entrusted with the task of looking after the children of the school's employees and that the babysitter club was created to assist the female teachers there. But due to a lack of volunteers and insufficient funding, it's been shorthanded. So the chairwoman called Ryuichi and Kotaru to help start the club. When going inside, they meet someone named Yuseida, who is the only daycare staff member. He welcomes Ryuichi and Kotaru and introduces them to the other kids, who are called Taka, Kirin, Takuma, Kazuma, and Midori. At night, teachers arrive to pick up their children, but Taka is the only one still waiting to be picked up. Ryuichi is expecting his mother to come, but is surprised when his brother arrives to collect him instead. Taka refuses to leave and wants to play with Ryuichi some more, so his older brother gives him a brotherly hit on the head and takes him home. After they leave, Ryuichi went to Kotaru, who's been quiet all day. He panics after noticing he has a turbo fever, then he rushes outside after Taka's older brother and asks him if he will take him to the nearest hospital. He agrees to help without hesitation and shows the way. The doctor informs Ryuichi that the fever was probably caused by the stress from a change in environment. When going outside for some fresh air, he goes about notifying his parents, but then remembers that they are no longer alive. He starts to cry like anyone would in his shoes, then suddenly the chairwoman finds him and comforts him. She reminisces on the funeral for all the plane crash victims, pointing out that the only ones not crying were them and her. She kindly tells him that he's not alone and doesn't have to be strong all by himself. After she leaves, Ryuichi goes back inside to collect Kotaru tomorrow, who's feeling much better. So they go back home. The following morning, the chairwoman orders Ryuichi to get up at once, despite it being 5 in the morning, and tells them breakfast and lunch is already prepared. She also gave Ryuichi a brand new uniform, which he is happy and proud to receive. While on his way to class, he notices people looking at him strange and laughing. He runs into Kamatani and asks if something is weird about him. He tells him to turn around and it turns out all the children from the daycare had been following him. A girl called Maria gives Ryuichi a chewing out about the children, so he does his best just to round them up as fast as he can and take them back to daycare. Maria is the top student in the advanced class and makes her studies her top priority. She brings Taka's lunch to daycare, explaining that Miss Kemitani asked her to bring it since her son forgot. Yuseida uses this moment to take advantage and pretends that he is sick and asks Maria to take over for him. At first the children are scared of Maria because of the incident in the hallway. She opens up and starts crying, saying that studying is all she's good at and the harder she studies, the more alone she becomes. The children go over to comfort her and they all cry along together. Later, Ryuichi asks Kotaro if he wants to go to the zoo. However, the kids overhear and before he can blink, they are all begging him to go. Yuseida tells him that he should take everyone and he will go with him too since he can get paid for working weekends. Ryuichi is granted permission from the chairwoman for the zoo trip and even invites her to go, but she unsurprisingly declines the invitation. Saikawa had prepared the food for all the children and even put an extra for the parents. Kamatani apologizes for dropping Tak off by himself, but he can't stay as he has training and their mom is busy. The children have fun exploring and seeing all the different animals at the zoo, but when they're about to leave, Taka thinks he has seen his older brother and starts to follow him. After tailing the man, Taka discovers it was not his brother and he ends up lost. Taka panics and cries like any child his age would and calls out for his brother. Luckily enough, Kamitani appears and although Taka tries to hide it, he is over the moon to see him. Valentine's Day arrives and the boys discuss if they'll receive chocolates or not, and the girls discuss who they would give them to. The girls mention a boy from the advanced class they have a crush on called Yagi, and try to give him their chocolates. However, Maria flips out and reminds the girls that it is against school rules to give out chocolates during this day. Yagi agrees with Maria and tells the girls to wait till after school. He then questions Maria about the babysitter club and says that he is interested in joining it because he loves little kids. Maria snaps at Yagi and tells him to speak to them himself, so Yagi finds Ryuichi and asks if he can join. Confused as no one ever wants to join the babysitter club, he happily accepted, puts Yagi into the club. Ryuichi takes a mental note when he sees Yagi compliment all the children one by one weirdly trying hard to get on their good side. Meanwhile, Maria overhears two students say that Yagi looks at the kids in a very strange way. So she runs to the daycare and finds Yagi with a nosebleed. Suddenly Yagi's friend called Nizuken takes him away since it wouldn't be good if he joins the club. The children begin to ask Maria for chocolates, but she tells them no and that it is forbidden on this day. So they all burst into tears. But just a few seconds later, she tells them that if they can wait till tomorrow, 
She'll bring them the most delicious chocolate she can, which makes them happy. While walking home, Ryuichi gives Maria some chocolates as a compliment, which makes her blush. The next morning, Ryuichi has physical education. A couple of the boys in his group complain about having gym as a first period and that it's too cold. All of a sudden, Yuseida comes along with the kids and Ryuichi's classmates begin to chase them around the playground so that they can use them as heat packs to warm themselves up. Ryuichi sees Takuma being picked up by him and rests suspiciously, but it turns out that he is the father of Takuma and Kazuma. He explains that he was dressed like that because he is famous and didn't want to be recognized. He was hoping to spend his first day off in six months with his children, but when he picks up Kazuma, he cries. After many attempts of trying to play with them, he gives up and leaves. While exiting the school, he gets recognized and flooded with kids begging for his autograph and a picture, but luckily his wife shows up and saves him. She explains to him that it may be her fault that Kazuma is afraid of him because they were watching a movie where he acted as a kidnapper. He turns around to find Kazuma and Takuma. They call him Papa and ask him to play with them, which made him filled with joy. The next morning, Ryuichi starts his first day of high school and the clubs began to look for new members, but Ryuichi decides to stick with the babysitter club. However, Yuseida encourages him to at least take a look at the different clubs, so they take a walk to check them out, such as the drama club, who the mother of Kirin is in charge of, the cooking club which Maria is a part of, and the baseball club which Taka's older brother plays for. While Yuichi is putting up a flyer for the babysitter club, Kamatani approaches us to ask if he can join, surprised as ever, Ryuichi asks him why, and he goes on to explain that it's because his brother Taka is there and also that Kotaru recruited him. The next day, Ryuichi wakes up feeling heavy and sick, so the chairwoman takes Kotaru to stop the cold from spreading to him. She gives Ryuichi an extra blanket and Kotaru helps her prepare food and medicine to make him better. He uses all his strength just to get one drop out of a lemon, which was a cuteness overload for me. After having recovered, Ryuichi returns to the daycare and while changing Midori's diaper, he realizes there are no wipes to clean her with and while he looks for some more, she crawls away. Just then, a boy opens the door and gets a bad first impression. He had gone to the club to meet Midori, who apparently is to be his future daughter, when he gets with her mother. Ryuichi thinks about it during class and is confused as he thought Midori's mom was married. When he gets to the daycare, he meets the boy again. He tells Ryuichi that he wants to help Midori's mother since her husband was in heaven when he was about to tell her his feelings. Midori starts to cry and her mother tells her that her pop was returning from his trip today when he finds out that he misunderstood Miss Sawatari. He says that when she wants to go out with her husband, he could take care of Midori, covering up that he was just about to confess his love for her. When Ryuichi was drying his clothes, Kotaru sees someone in the bushes and brings Ryuichi over to help him. It turns out to be Kichiko Nezuken's brother, so Ryuichi decides to call Nezu, but realizes that he didn't have his number, so he called Yagi instead, who came with Maria. It's discovered that Nezuken works a job while still being in school because he has a large family, and his little brother reveals that he ran away because someone wouldn't buy him a game. Suddenly, his other young brother pops out the bush too and calls Yagi a pervert. After talking, Ryuichi and Yagi heave them out of the bush. At that moment, Nezu appears with the game kit she wanted and tells them they'd better thank father and share it with the others. The following school day, Ryuichi forgets his lunch, so Yuseida lets Kotaru take it to him to see how he goes with his first extra rare and use. Yuseida managed to convince the boy that is in love with Midoriya's mother to watch over Kotaru in exchange for a photo of her. On the other hand, Ryuichi's classmates offer to give him their lunch when they noticed he was missing his. While while Kotaru climbs the stairs, he collides with a student and falls, dropping Ryuichi's lunch, but the student Yuseida asks to watch over him, saves the situation. He helps Kotaru to climb the rest of the stairs and in the end he reaches Ryuichi's classroom. Kotaru gives him his lunch. However, Ryuichi was already full from the food his classmates gave him, but he doesn't mention it as he didn't want to let Kotaru's efforts go to waste. So he picks him up to go and eat their lunch together. While talking to her friends, Yuki gets questioned about her feelings for Yuichi. She blushes and tells them to be quiet. Then the girls start saying how attractive he is and that he has a great personality. They voice their concerns about Maria and that she shouldn't be a problem as she only prioritizes her studies. But what the girls didn't know is that Maria was passing by and she heard everything. At that moment, Ryuichi comes and asks her if she needed anything. She dismisses him and snaps at the girls gossiping about her. While walking away, she contemplates her feelings for Ryuichi. When Kirin and Kotaru approach her, they ask if she will play with them. Maria states that this isn't a place to play and makes Kirin cry. She reveals that she doesn't go to the daycare to play with them because Ryuichi is there. Kirin asks her if she hates him, and Maria says she doesn't, so Kirin asks if she likes him and she says certainly not with a bright red face. Kirin then suggests they come up with a plan to make Maria like Ryuichi, blind to the fact that she already does. Maria goes along with the plan and follows them to Ryuichi's class. Kotaru goes in and cuddles Ryuichi to show he's accepting and loving. Maria says that he's a bit overindulgent, so Kirin says he can be strict too, and goes in and telling Ryuichi to hit her or she's going to be a bad girl. 
However, Kamatani hits her instead and she jumps into Ryuichi's arms, crying. Maria barges in and tells her that it's a misunderstanding and that she doesn't hate Ryuichi. So Kirin asks if she does actually like him. She goes red in the face again and storms off. Ryuichi rushes after her and grabs her by the arm, but instead of confessing his love for her, which we all wanted to see, he just tells her that she had a sticker on her skirt. The next day, Ryuichi finds a love letter in his locker and wonders who would have left it. Yuki sees him receive of it but tells her friend it wasn't her who left the letter. Meanwhile, Maria shows up and tells them to stop loitering where people are trying to leave. Then his classmates start reading the letter. It was a confession of love for Yuichi, which stated at the end of place to meet the next morning. Ryuichi couldn't concentrate and spends the rest of the day thinking about what to do. At home the chairwoman thinks he might have a cold as his face was red from blushing so much and tells him to take a hot bath and go to sleep. When Yuichi and Kotori were on their way to school, he was totally lost in thought from what to tell his secret lover. He loses Kotaru and runs into Maria and Yuki, who left early to find out who gave Ryuichi the love letter. They offered to help Ryuichi to find Kotaru, but it turns out he was found by Kamatani. We discovered that Kotaru wandered into someone's yard to bring Ryuichi a lemon as he thinks he is sick and needs to get better, when really he's just been acting weird because a girl likes him. In the end, Ryuichi rejects the girl who sent him the letter because his priority was Kotaru. Meanwhile, Maria and Yuki were hidden in a bush, listening to everything. Later, Kamatani and Taku invite Ryuichi and Kotaru to a festival. They arrive well-dressed for the occasion. While Kamatani was dressed casually, he bets Taka that he will lose his sword by the end of the day. Then they start walking. Taka finds a game he wants to play, which rewards a cool prize for winning, but it was clear that the game was arranged so that he loses, so Kamatani drags him away. They run into Yuseida, who was there working a part-time job that his neighbor asked him to do. At that moment, Taka realizes that he had lost his sword and bursts into tears, so they all start to search for it. The sword doesn't turn up, so Kimitani tells him that he can play the game he wanted if he decides not to search anymore. Taku accepts and when Kotaru pulls one of the ropes, the same sword that he lost comes out. Kamatani grabs the dodgy worker and as an apology, he gave them the newest game system. Returning to the daycare routine, Kamatani had quarreled with his brother for drawing a poop on his autograph baseball, but instead of hitting him like he usually does, he just completely ignores him. Outside, Ryuichi tries to talk to him and explains that Kotaru also destroyed some of his stuff too. But Kamatani explains that he wasn't angry about the ball, but that he doesn't understand what he did was wrong. On the other hand, the chairwoman was giving Taka a lesson. She asks for the sword he treasures and pretends she's going to break it to show Taka what his brother felt when he messed up his ball. And in the end they both reconcile. The day of the academy festival had finally arrived and for some reason the daycare room also had to participate. The parents of all the children are going to attend and Kieran's father arrives. He asks where the hot babysitter girls are. Yuseida plays a trick on him, introducing him to Kamatani and Ryuichi wearing wigs. Quickly, he realizes that they are men, and says that he doesn't feel comfortable leaving his daughter with male babysitters because he doesn't want his daughter's innocence stained. When he was just about to leave with his daughter, Ryuichi stops him. He seemed to quickly forget that Ryuichi was a boy, but when Midori pulls the wig and it falls off, he flips out and becomes even more determined to take his daughter from the daycare. Kamatani intervenes, who Kieran's father again mistakes for a girl. At that moment, Midori's father arrives guided by the boy who is in love with Midori's mother. All the parents share a moment and realize that their children are growing up so fast. Suddenly, Kamatani's mother appears at the daycare and informs them there are some eggs going to hatch soon over in the science lab and asks if they would like to go and see them. The children get excited and instantly make their way to the lab. However, the eggs are due to hatch the next day, which Taka's mom tried to tell them before they ran off excited. The following morning, Kotaru was excited to see the chicks. Taka's mom was there early and invites them in her classroom because the eggs were about to hatch. Ryuichi and Kotaru patiently wait by the incubator and finally the eggs hatch. Later on, all the other kids come to see the chicks too and Taka gets jealous because Kotaru had all the chicks. But Taka scares them away after shouting. Winter had come and Yuseida calls in sick to informs Ryuichi that it's probably because he slept naked after his bath, so he asks Saikawa to take his place that day. He didn't have the first clue what to do, but with the help of the children, he learns to adapt with the situation and everything went on to go well. Finally, Christmas had come and Taka was excited for Santa, but Kamatani almost tells him that Santa doesn't exist. However, Ryuichi stopped him before he could finish. Ryuichi didn't have the money to buy a Santa costume and his cell phone was malfunctioning, but thanks to his classmates, he manages to get a suit. When Ryuichi returns home, Saikawa had a special dinner prepared and informs them that the chairwoman is unable to join them as she has a very important meeting and he can't either, since he has some work to finish. Ryuichi had planned to put on a Santa costume. His classmates help prepare and give Kotaru his presents as his dad used to do. But when he leaves to go and change, Kotaru would not leave him alone. Following him all the way into the bathroom, 
At that moment the doorbell rang and Ryuichi along with Kotaro opened it to find everyone had come together to surprise them. The chairwoman gives Ryuichi a new cell phone since his old one had been malfunctioning and so with everyone together they celebrate Christmas Day, bringing the anime to an end. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed and turn on the notification bell so you never miss out on another video. See you in the next one take care bye.